Next, we're going to talk about the sieve of Eratosthenes. Eratosthenes was a mathematician, and the sieve of Eratosthenes is a mathematical technique for finding prime numbers. Here's a picture of Eratosthenes. He was from ancient Greece, lived about 200 BC, and even though he was from ancient Greece, he lived and worked in Alexandria, Egypt. I'll show you where this is. Uh, I'm recording this over here in Atlanta. Across the Atlantic Ocean, Europe is up here and Africa down here, and this is the Mediterranean Sea. And over on the north side of the Mediterranean Sea, that's Greece. I'll zoom in there. It's Greece there. Then across the Mediterranean Sea, down here is Egypt. And the Nile River flows north through Egypt, and there's Cairo, and there's Alexandria. On the north side of the Nile Delta, right there, Alexandria, Egypt. And Alexandria had a famous library, a one of the wonders of the ancient world, actually, the library, library of Alexandria. And um, uh, libraries were pretty rare in the ancient world, and those that did exist didn't have many books because the printing press hadn't been invented yet. Sometimes a library might only have 10 or 20 books. Um, but the Library of Alexandria had amassed thousands and thousands of volumes. And Eratosthenes was actually in charge of the library for a while. So he, he had access to a lot of books and was a very well-educated man and did a lot of noteworthy stuff. He uh, developed a map of the ancient world and a system of latitude and longitude for measuring positions on the map. And he actually measured the circumference of the earth, came up with a technique for measuring the distance around the earth and got it right. And another thing that he's famous for is his work with prime numbers. And he used a grid uh, like this, a grid of numbers, and crossed a bunch of numbers out, basically crossed out all the non-prime numbers, leaving the primes remaining, and the result looked like a sieve. Now the word sieve, a uh, sieve refers to a uh, a cooking instrument. It's like a pot with a bunch of holes in it. You might uh, refer to it as a colander or a strainer like you would strain spaghetti with. But the point is that it has a bunch of holes in it. And after we cross out a bunch of numbers we have what remains uh, will look something like a sieve or might remind some people of a sieve. Okay here's the technique for using a grid of numbers to find the prime numbers. And on your page, I want you to do this with me. Start by crossing out the number 1, because it's not prime. And we're going to start with the number 2. And the, the number 2 is prime, so we want to leave it there. But we're going to cross out all the multiples of 2. So basically every even number. Anything that is a multiple of 2 won't be prime, because it will have 2 as a factor. So leave the number 2, but cross out all the multiples of 2. Now this will take just a little while. You can actually just go down these even columns here. But go ahead and cross these out. And after you get all the multiples of 2 crossed out, it will speed up a little bit after that. But every single number that we are scratching out right now is not prime. And so the goal here is to scratch out every non-prime number. and we'll be left with only prime numbers when we're done. Okay, now the point here is that every number that we're crossing out is a multiple of 2, but specifically it has a factor of 2, which means it has a factor other than 1 and itself. And that's the idea that we're going to continue to employ with the other numbers. Okay, now go go to the, we started with the number 2, now go to the next number, the number 3. We're going to cross out all the multiples of 3 that aren't already crossed out. Because any number that is a multiple of 3 has the number 3 as a factor, which means it is not prime. So 9 is a multiple of 3, so cross it out. Uh, continue down the list, 15 is a multiple of 3, so cross it out. 21 is a multiple of 3, and 27. On the next row, cross out 33 and 39. And then 45 is a multiple of 3. And then 51 is a multiple of 3, and 57 is. And 63, cross that out, cross out 69. Um, 75 is a multiple of 3. 81 
is a multiple of 3, and 87 is, and 93, and 99. Okay, now we don't need to cross out multiples of 4, because every multiple of 4 is also a multiple of 2, and those have already been crossed out. So we go to the next number, multiples of 5. Cross out all the multiples of 5. Well, those will be all the 5s and all the 10s. Now, the 10s are already crossed out because those were even. So cross out all the multiples of 5. They'd be 25, 35, 55, 65, 85, and 95. Okay? The multiples of 6 will all be even numbers. They'll actually all be multiples of 3 also. So those are crossed out. So multiples of 7, we need to find the multiples of 7. That's a little bit tricky. But you should know that 7 times 7 is 49, so cross out 49. And 77 here, that's uh, 7 times 11. So 77 is a multiple of 7, so it can't be prime. Cross that out. And it also turns out 7 times 13 is 91. So cross out 91. Okay, and, and actually we're done now with this grid. Every number that remains is a prime number. And so this reminds people sometimes of a sieve, because you think the solid, what I've got here is green, solid green, except for these holes that remain. But all of the numbers that remain are prime, and you recognize some of these from the list earlier, 2, 3, 5, 7, and so on. But every single number here has no factors other than 1 and itself. Now there are many other techniques for finding prime numbers, but this is a, a relatively simple technique and an interesting one that's been around for thousands of years, and or... or since around 200 BC or so when Eratosthenes did this. And this could be extended beyond 100, of course, but this is enough to get the idea.